all Israel came together to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even while Saul was king, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord your God said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, he made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel, as the Lord had promised through Samuel. David and all the Israelites marched to Jerusalem, that is, Jebus. The Jebusites who lived there said to David, You will not get in here. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. David had said, Whoever leads the attack on the Jebusites will become commander-in-chief. Joab, son of Zeruiah, went up first, and so he received the command. David then took up residence in the fortress, and so it was called the City of David. He built up the city around it, from the terraces to the surrounding wall, while Joab restored the rest of the city, and David became more and more powerful, because the Lord Almighty was with him. These were the chiefs of David's mighty warriors. They, together with all Israel, gave his kingship strong support to extend it over the whole land as the Lord had promised. This is the list of David's mighty warriors. Jeshobiah, a Hakmonite, was chief of the officers. He raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed in one encounter. Next to him, was Eleazar, son of Dodai the Ahohite, one of the three mighty warriors. He was with David at Pasdamon when the Philistines gathered there for battle. At a place where there was a field full of barley, the troops fled from the Philistines, but they took their stand in the middle of the field. They defended it and struck the Philistines down, and the Lord brought about a great victory. Three of the thirty chiefs came down to David to the rock at the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time, David was in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David longed for water and said, Ah, ah, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem, and carried it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out to the Lord. God forbid that I should do this, he said. Should I drink the blood of these men who went at the risk of their lives? Because they risked their lives to bring it back, David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of the three mighty warriors. Obishai, the brother of Joab, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed, and so he became as famous as the three. He was doubly honored above the three and became their commander, even though he was not included among them. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, a valiant fighter from Capsiel, performed great exploits. He struck down Moab's two mightiest warriors, he also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And he struck down an Egyptian who was five cubits tall. Although the Egyptian had a spear like a weaver's rod in his hand, Benaiah went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benaiah, son of Jehoiada. He, too, was as famous as the three mighty warriors. He was held in greater honor than any of the thirty, but he was not included among the three, and David put him in charge of his bodyguard. The mighty warriors were Asahel, the brother of Joab, Elhanan, son of Dodo from Bethlehem, Shameth, the Hawarite, Elis, the Pelonite, Ira, son of Ikish from Tekoa, Abaiza, 
from Anathoth, Sibukai, the Hushathite, Eli, the Ahohite, Mehurai, the Netophathite, Helen, son of Baun, the Netophathite, Hithai, son of Ribai, from Gabiah and Benjamin, Benea, the Parathonite, Purai, from the ravines of Gaash, Abiel, the Arbathite, Asmabeth, the Buharamite, Eliaba, the Shealbanite, the sons of Hashem, the Geisenite, Jonathan, son of Shehi, the Hararite, Ahiam, son of Sekha, the Hararite, Eliphal, son of Ur, Hefer, the Mekarathite, Ahijah, the Pelonite, Hezro, the Carmelite, Naorai, son of Esbai, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mipar, son of Hagrai, Zelik, the Ammonite, Naorai, the Berethite, the armor-bearer of Joab, son of Zeruiah, Ira, the Ithrite, Gareb, the Ithrite, Uriah, the Hittite, Zabad, son of Ali, Adina, son of Shiza, the Reubenite, who was chief of the Reubenites and the thirty with him, Hanan, son of Meuka, Joshaphat, the Mithnite, Uzziah, the Ashtarathite, Shama, and Jeiel, the sons of Hotham, the Aurorite, Jediel, son of Shimrai, his brother Joha, the Tysite, Eliel, the Meavite, Jerobai and Joshaviah, the sons of El Nahum, Ithma, the Moabite, Eliab, Obed, and Jehesi, the Mesobeah. These were the men who came to David at Ziklag while he was banished from the presence of Saul, son of Kish. They were among the warriors who helped him in battle. They were armed with bows and were able to shoot arrows or to sling stones, right-handed or left-handed. They were relatives of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin, Ahiezer their chief, and Joash the sons of Shemaiah the Gibeathite, Jeziel and Pelet the sons of Asmaveth, Berukah, Jehu the Anathothite, and Ishmaiah the Gibeonite a mighty warrior among the thirty, who was a leader of the thirty, Jeremiah, Jehaziel, Johanan, Josabad the Gedirathite, Eluzai, Jeremoth, Beuliah, Shemariah and Shephatiah the Harufite, Elkanah, Ishiah, Azarel, Joezer and Jeshobiam the Korohites, and Joela and Zebediah, the sons of Jeroham, from Gedor. Some Gadites defected to David at his stronghold in the wilderness. They were brave warriors, ready for battle and able to handle the shield and spear. Their faces were the faces of lions, and they were as swift as gazelles in the mountains. Ezer was the chief, Obadiah the second in command, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremiah the tenth, and Machbani the eleventh. These Gadites were army commanders. The least was a match for a hundred, and the greatest for a thousand. It was they who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it was overflowing all its banks, and they put to flight everyone living in the valleys to the east and to the west. Other Benjamites and some men from Judah also came to David in his stronghold. David went out to meet them and said to them, If you have come to me in peace to help me, I am ready for you to join me. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies who my hands are free from violence, may the God of our ancestors see it and judge you. Then the spirit came on Amasai, chief of the thirty, and he said, We are yours, David. We are with you, son of Jesse. Success, 
Success to you and success to those who help you, for your God will help you. So David received them and made them leaders of his raiding bands. Some of the tribe of Manasseh defected to David when he went with the Philistines to fight against Saul. He and his men did not help the Philistines because, after consultation, their rulers sent him away. They said, It will cost us our heads if he deserts to his master Saul. When David went to Ziklag, these were the men of Manasseh who defected to him. Adna, Josephad, Jediel, Michael, Josephad, Elihu, and Zilothai, leaders of units of a thousand in Manasseh. They helped David against raiding bands, for all of them were brave warriors, and they were commanders in his army. Day after day, men came to help David until he had a great army, like the army of God. These are the numbers of the men armed for battle who came to David at Hebron to turn Saul's kingdom over to him, as the Lord had said. From Judah, carrying shield and spear, 6,800 armed for battle. From Simeon, warriors ready for battle, 7,100. From Levi, 4,600, including Jehoiada, leader of the family of Aaron, with 3,700 men. And Zadok, a brave young warrior with 22 officers from his family. From Benjamin, Saul's tribe, 3,000, most of whom had remained loyal to Saul's house until then. From Ephraim, brave warriors famous in their own clans, 20,800 from half the tribe of Manasseh, designated by name to come and make David king, 18,000. From Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do, 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their command. From Zebulun, experienced soldiers prepared for battle with every type of weapon to help David with undivided loyalty, 50,000. From Naphtali, 1,000 officers, together with 37,000 men carrying shields and spears. From Dan, ready for battle, 28,600. From Asher, experienced soldiers prepared for battle, 40,000. And from east of the Jordan, from Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, armed with every type of weapon, 120,000. All these were fighting men who volunteered to serve in the ranks. They came to Hebron fully determined to make David king over all Israel. All the rest of the Israelites were also of one mind to make David king. The men spent three days there with David, eating and drinking, for their families had supplied provisions for them. Also, their neighbors from as far away as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali came bringing food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. There were plentiful supplies of flour, fig cakes, raisin cakes, wine, olive oil, cattle, and sheep, for there was joy in Israel. David conferred with each of his officers, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. He then said to the whole assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it is the will of the Lord our God, let us send word far and wide to the rest of our people throughout the territories of Israel, and also to the priests and Levites who are with them in their towns and pasture lands to come and join us. Let us bring the ark of our God back to us, for we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. The whole assembly agreed to do this because it seemed right to all the people. So David assembled all Israel from the Shihor River in Egypt to Lebohamoth to bring the ark of God from kiriath Jeor. David and all Israel went to Baala of Judah, kiriath Jeor to bring up from there the Ark of God, the Lord who is enthroned between the cherubim, the Ark that is called by the name. They moved the Ark of God from Abinadab's house on a new cart, 
with Uzzah and Ahio guiding it. David and all the Israelites were celebrating with all their might before God, with songs and with harps, lyres, timbrels, cymbals, and trumpets. When they came to the threshing floor of Kaidan, Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah, and he struck him down because he had put his hand on the ark. So he died there before God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah, and to this day that place is called Piris Uzzah. David was afraid of God that day and asked, How can I ever bring the Ark of God to me? He did not take the Ark to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The Ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months, and the Lord blessed his household and everything he had. Now Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, along with cedar logs, stonemasons, and carpenters, to build a palace for him. And David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, and that his kingdom had been highly exalted for the sake of his people Israel. In Jerusalem, David took more wives and became the father of more sons and daughters. These are the names of the children born to him there. Shemua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Elpilet, Noga, Nephik, Japhiah, Elishima, Beoliada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all Israel, they went up in full force to search for him. But David heard about it and went out to meet them. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of God, Shall I go and attack the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hands? The Lord answered him, Go! I will deliver them into your hands. So David and his men went up to Baal Perazim, and there he defeated them. He said, As waters break out, God is broken out against my enemies by my hand. So that place was called Baal Perazim. The Philistines had abandoned their gods there, and David gave orders to burn them in the fire. Once more the Philistines raided the valley. So David inquired of God again, and God answered him, Do not go directly after them, but circle around them and attack them in front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move out to battle, because that will mean God has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistine army. So David did as God commanded him. And they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Giza. So David's fame spread throughout every land, and the Lord made all the nations fear him. After David had constructed buildings for himself in the city of David, he prepared a place for the Ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said, No one but the Levites may carry the Ark of God because the Lord chose them to carry the ark of the Lord and to minister before him forever. David assembled all Israel in Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to the place he had prepared for it. He called together the descendants of Aaron and the Levites from the descendants of Kohath, Uriel, the leader, and 120 relatives, from the descendants of Merari, Asaiah, the leader, and 220 relatives. From the descendants of Gershon, Joel, the leader, and 130 relatives. From the descendants of Elzaphan, Shemaiah, the leader, and 200 relatives. From the descendants of Hebron, Eliel, the leader, and 80 relatives. 
from the descendants of Uziel, Amenadab, the leader, and 112 relatives. Then David summoned Zadok and Abiathar, the priests, and Uriel, Asaiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Amenadab, the Levites. He said to them, You are the heads of the Levitical families. You and your fellow Levites are to consecrate yourselves and bring up the Ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. It was because you, the Levites, did not bring it up the first time that the Lord our God broke out in anger against us. We did not inquire of him about how to do it in the prescribed way. So the priests and Levites consecrated themselves in order to bring up the Ark of the Lord, the God of Israel. And the Levites carried the Ark of God with the poles on their shoulders, as Moses had commanded, in accordance with the word of the Lord. David told the leaders of the Levites to appoint their fellow Levites as musicians to make a joyful sound with musical instruments, lyres, harps, and cymbals. So the Levites appointed Heman, son of Joel, from his relatives, Asaph, son of Berechiah, and from their relatives, the Merarites, Ethan, son of Cushaiah, and with them, their relatives next in rank, Zechariah, Jeaziel, Shemiramim, Jehiel, Unai, Eliab, Benaiah, Meusiah, Mattathiah, Eliphalehu, Mikmiah, Obed-Edom, and Jehiel, the gatekeepers. The musicians Heman, Asaph, and Ethan were to sound the bronze cymbals. Zechariah, Jeaziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Unai, Eliab, Maoseah, and Benaiah were to play the lyres according to Alameth, and Mattathiah, Eliphalehu, Mikniah, Obed-Edom, Jehiel, and Azuziah were to play the harps, directing according to Sheminith. Kenaniah, the head Levite, was in charge of the singing. That was his responsibility because he was skillful at it. Berechiah and Elkanah were to be doorkeepers for the ark. Shebaniah, Joshaphat, Nethanel, Amasai, Zechariah, Benaiah, and Eliezer, the priests, were to blow trumpets before the ark of God. Obed-Edom and Jehiah were also to be doorkeepers for the ark. So David and the elders of Israel and the commanders of units of a thousand went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the house of Obed-Edom with rejoicing. Because God had helped the Levites who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, seven bulls and seven rams were sacrificed. Now David was clothed in a robe of fine linen, as were all the Levites who were carrying the Ark and as were the musicians, and Kenaniah, who was in charge of the singing of the choirs. David also wore a linen ephod. So all Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord with shouts, with the sounding of ram's horns and trumpets, and of cymbals, and the playing of lyres and harps. As the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David dancing and celebrating, she despised him in her heart. They brought the Ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had pitched for him. And they presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before God. After David had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each Israelite man and woman. He appointed some of the Levites to minister before the Ark of the Lord, to extol, thank, and praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief and next to him in rank were Zechariah, then Jehaziel, 
Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and Jehiel. They were to play the lyres and harps. Asaph was to sound the cymbals. And Benaiah and Jehaziel, the priests, were to blow the trumpets regularly before the Ark of the Covenant of God. That day, David first appointed Asaph and his associates to give praise to the Lord in this manner. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you I will give the land of Canaan as a portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed, and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake, he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant in everything in them. Let the trees of the forest sing. Let them sing for joy before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out! Save us, God our Savior! Gather us and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen. And praise the Lord. David left Asaph and his associates before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister there regularly according to each day's requirements. He also left Obed-Edom and his 68 associates to minister with them. Obed-Edom, son of Jeduthun, and also Hosa were gatekeepers. David left Zadok the priest and his fellow priests before the tabernacle of the Lord at the high place in Gibeon to present burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering regularly, morning and evening, in accordance with everything written in the law of the Lord, which he had given Israel. With them were Heman and Jeduthun and the rest of those chosen and designated by name to give thanks to the Lord. 
for his love endures forever. Heman and Jejuthun were responsible for the sounding of the trumpets and cymbals, and for the playing of the other instruments for sacred song. The sons of Jejuthun were stationed at the gate. Then all the people left, each for their own home, and David returned home to bless his family. After David was settled in his palace, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord is under a tent. Nathan replied to David, Whatever you have in mind, do it, for God is with you. But that night the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord says. You are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought Israel up out of Egypt to this day. I have moved from one tent site to another, from one dwelling place to another. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their leaders whom I commanded to shepherd my people, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name like the names of the greatest men on earth, and I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them any more as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also subdue all your enemies. I declare to you that the Lord will build a house for you. When your days are over and you go to be with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, one of your own sons and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will never take my love away from him as I took it away from your predecessor. I will set him over my house and my kingdom forever. His throne will be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, Lord God? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, my God, you have spoken about the future of the house of your servant. You, Lord God, have looked on me as though I were the most exalted of men. What more can David say to you for honoring your servant? For you know your servant, Lord. For the sake of your servant and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made known all these great promises. There is no one like you, Lord, and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. And who is like your people Israel, the one nation on earth whose God went out to redeem a people for himself? and to make a name for yourself, and to perform great and awesome wonders by driving out nations from before your people, whom you redeemed from Egypt. You made your people Israel your very own forever. And you, Lord, have become their God. And now, Lord, let the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house be established forever. 
do as you promised, so that it will be established and that your name will be great forever. Then people will say, The Lord Almighty, the God over Israel, is Israel's God. And the house of your servant David will be established before you. You, my God, have revealed to your servant that you will build a house for him. So your servant has found courage to pray to you. You, Lord, are God. You have promised these good things to your servant. Now you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant that it may continue forever in your sight. For you, Lord, have blessed it, and it will be blessed forever. In the course of time, David defeated the Philistines and subdued them. And he took Gath and its surrounding villages from the control of the Philistines. David also defeated the Moabites, and they became subject to him and brought him tribute. Moreover, David defeated Hadadezer, king of Zobah, in the vicinity of Hamath, when he went to set up his monument at the Euphrates River. David captured a thousand of his chariots, 7,000 charioteers, and 20,000 foot soldiers. He hamstrung all but a hundred of the chariot horses. When the Arameans of Damascus came to help Hadadezer, king of Zobah, David struck down 22,000 of them. He put garrisons in the Aramean kingdom of Damascus, and the Arameans became subject to him and brought him tribute. The Lord gave David victory wherever he went. David took the gold shields carried by the officers of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. From Teba and Kun, towns that belonged to Hadadezer, David took a great quantity of bronze, which Solomon used to make the bronze sea, the pillars, and the various bronze articles. When too, king of Hamath heard that David had defeated the entire army of Hadadezer, king of Zobah, he sent his son, Hadoram, to king David to greet him and congratulate him on his victory in battle over Hadadezer, who had been at war with too. Hadoram brought all kinds of articles of gold, of silver, and of bronze. King David dedicated these articles to the Lord, as he had done with the silver and gold he had taken from all these nations, Edom and Moab, the Ammonites and the Philistines, and Amalek. Abishai, son of Zeruiah, struck down 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became subject to David. The Lord gave David victory wherever he went. David reigned over all Israel, doing what was just and right for all his people. Joab, son of Zeruiah, was over the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was recorder. Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, were priests. Shavsha was secretary. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was over the Carathites and Pelethites, and David's sons were chief officials at the king's side. In the course of time, Nahash, king of the Ammonites, died, and his son succeeded him as king. David thought, I will show kindness to Hanan, son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. So David sent a delegation to express his sympathy to Hanan concerning his father. When David's envoys came to Hanan in the land of the Ammonites to express sympathy to him, the Ammonite commanders said to Hanan, Do you think David is honoring your father by sending envoys to you to express sympathy? Haven't his envoys come to you only to explore and spy out the country and overthrow it? So Hanan seized David's envoys, shaved them, cut off their garments at the buttocks, and sent them away. When someone came and told David about the men, he sent messengers to meet them, for they were greatly humiliated. The king said, Stay at Jericho till your beards have grown, and then come back. When the Ammonites realized that they had become obnoxious to David, Hanan and the Ammonites sent a thousand talents of silver to hire chariots and charioteers from Aram Nehuraim, Aram Meuka, and Zobah. They hired 32,000 chariots and charioteers, 
as well as the king of Meuka with his troops, who came and camped near Mediba, while the Ammonites were mustered from their towns and moved out for battle. On hearing this, David sent Joab out with the entire army of fighting men. The Ammonites came out and drew up in battle formation at the entrance to their city, while the kings who had come were by themselves in the open country. Joab saw that there were battle lines in front of him and behind him, so he selected some of the best troops of Israel and deployed them against the Arameans. He put the rest of the men under the command of Abishai, his brother, and they were deployed against the Ammonites. Joab said, If the Arameans are too strong for me, then you are to rescue me. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, then I will rescue you. Be strong, and let us fight bravely for our people in the cities of our God. The Lord will do what is good in his sight. Then Joab and the troops with him advanced to fight the Arameans, and they fled before him. When the Ammonites realized that the Arameans were fleeing, they too fled before his brother Abishai and went inside the city. So Joab went back to Jerusalem. After the Arameans saw that they had been routed by Israel, they sent messengers and had Arameans brought from beyond the Euphrates River, with Shophak, the commander of Hadadezer's army, leading them. When David was told of this, he gathered all Israel and crossed the Jordan. He advanced against them and formed his battle lines opposite them. David formed his lines to meet the Arameans in battle, and they fought against him. But they fled before Israel, and David killed 7,000 of their charioteers and 40,000 of their foot soldiers. He also killed Shophak, the commander of their army. When the vassals of Hadadezer saw that they had been routed by Israel, they made peace with David and became subject to him. So the Arameans were not willing to help the Ammonites anymore. In the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, Joab led out the armed forces. He laid waste the land of the Ammonites and went to Rabbah and besieged it. But David remained in Jerusalem. Joab attacked Rabbah and left it in ruins. David took the crown from the head of their king. Its weight was found to be a talent of gold, and it was set with precious stones, and it was placed on David's head. He took a great quantity of plunder from the city and brought out the people who were there, consigning them to labor with saws and with iron picks and axes. David did this to all the Ammonite towns. Then David and his entire army returned to Jerusalem. In the course of time, war broke out with the Philistines at Gezer. At that time, Sibukai, the Hushathite, killed Sippai, one of the descendants of the Rephaites, and the Philistines were subjugated. In another battle with the Philistines, Elhanan, son of Jair, killed Lamai, the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. In still another battle which took place at Gath, there was a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in all. He also was descended from Rapha. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan, son of Shimea, David's brother, killed him. These were descendants of Rapha in Gath, and they fell at the hands of David and his men.